And so I'm going to talk to you about wearable textiles and electronics. What is wearable textiles? They call them e-textiles. We're learning how to put sensors into fabrics. So in the future, you're going to be able to get data from your body just by wearing clothing and fabrics. It's amazing technology that we're uh, embarking upon. Uh, I spent my whole career in healthcare. Uh, I did 20, 35 years working as a medic, as a nurse, as a chief nursing officer. Did 25 years in the military, retired lieutenant colonel. Um, but all that experience just led me to this belief of what's possible. How do we, how do we change the world? How do we make things better? So we're going to talk about e-textiles. Again, I just talked about it's putting conductive yarn into fabrics. Uh, just again, amazing stuff. So as you can see here, this is our sock. Um, and I can pass it around. I got a couple of samples for the people that are the most active and participant. I like to throw out socks at the end, like at the arena when they throw the t-shirts out. I'll say who's the loudest. But um, it, it's really simply amazing. These here uh, are the sensors, and it's just thread. It is just thread. So when that sock is made off the machine and the sock pops off the machine, it's, it's in, it, um, embedded into the sock. So uh, we have this, these are conductive yarn, and then we uh, apply the electronics to connect it to a tablet, a phone, a Bluetooth connection. But think of this as like a force plate. Uh, we can measure resistance with that, just the conductive yarn. So one of the ways I came up with this idea is I always talk to people about what's possible. So when I think of this audience here, uh, when I was at the hospital, I would always show this video to the nurses, uh, the new nurses that would come to the hospital, and I would always show this video because I didn't want them to get stymied into the same old, same old, this is how we always do it. And change is very difficult for people, especially in healthcare. I could give you an hour lecture on on nursing humor in the hospitals about <laughs> resistance to change. People are very resistant to change. But this video here, um, I thought applied to everybody in this room and what you do when you do your teaching. Um, and I use this for what I did at the hospital and it kind of led me to this idea with the uh, smart socks. So we'll hit play. This class is social studies. That is you and the world, yes. There is a world out there, and even if you decide you don't want to meet it, it's still going to hit you right in the face. Believe me. So, best you start thinking about the world now and what it means to you. What does the world mean to you? Come on, a little class participation here. Is it just this class you want to get out of? Your house, your street? Any further any of you want to go than that? Yes? The mall. That's only like two miles away from me. <laughs> well, let me ask you another question. How often do you think about things that happen outside of this town? You watch the news? Yes? No? All right, so we're not global thinkers yet, but why aren't we? Because we're 11. Good point. What's your name? Trevor. Maybe Trevor is absolutely right. Why should we think about the world? I mean, after all, what does the world expect of us? Expect. Mm -hmm. Of you. What does the world expect of you? Nothing. Nothing. My God, boys and girls, he's absolutely right. Nothing. I mean, here you are, you can't drive, you can't vote, you can't even go to the bathroom without a pass from me. You're stuck right here in the seventh grade. But not forever, because one day you'll be free. Yeah. All right, but what if on that day you're free, you haven't prepared, you're not ready, and then you look around you and you don't like what the world is. What if the world is just a big disappointment? We're screwed. <laughs> unless, unless you take the things that you don't like about this world and you flip them upside down and you can start that today. This is your assignment.
extra credit, it goes on all year long. Now, wait a minute. What? What? What's wrong with this? What's the matter? Yes? It's, it's like so... So what? There must be a word to finish that sentence. Someone help her? Weird. Crazy. Weird. Crazy. Hard. Bummer. Bummer. Hard. How about possible? It's possible. The realm of possibility exists where? In each of you. So, I love showing that video because that's what I would always tell people. The realm of possibility exists here. Don't be limited to your thinking. And where I use that, and again, I would show this at every orientation for our nurses, and I would just try to give them a, a nice motivational talk about what to expect at our hospital. But that led me to, a, I was in a meeting with GE Healthcare. We were a brand new hospital, maybe three years old. So we had brand new equipment, all the stuff we needed, and I'm meeting with this GE rep, and he's trying to sell me an updated heart monitor. And I'm, I was in the C-suite at the time, and, and I'm like, I, I don't need more heart monitors. I got brand new heart monitors. We haven't even opened up two of our nursing units yet. That's how new we were. We were building. And I, and I sat there, and I scratched my head, and I said, I go, doesn't GE Healthcare work on new things? I go, what do you, I go, we're a brand new hospital. We, we love innovation. I said, tell me some things you're working on that you haven't put in the commercialization yet. We'll be your beta site. We'll be your sandbox. He had nothing. And I'm like, what if you, can't you guys have like a, a, like a pair of socks? Like you give all these socks and just make it a smart sock and hook it up to the heart monitor and get the biometrics off of it and stuff? He's like, well, we, can, we don't have anything like that. And so I left that meeting, and here I was just brainstorming ideas with this GE rep, and I said, a smart sock, I'm going to do that. So then I met with some folks, some engineering folks, raised a little money, um, and we built a prototype, and we did some research on how we can improve that sock and use conductive yarn to make that sock come alive. My thought was every patient that comes to a hospital gets a pair of those socks, those anti-skid socks. Do you know why? Because of the tile floors, and we're worried about infection, so we gotta make sure we bleach the floors, clean the floors, so they're slippery. So that's why you get those anti-skid socks every time you come to the hospital. And I'm thinking, if nurses are already putting a pair of socks on every patient, why not make it a smart sock? I'm not asking them to do something new that's already part of their workflow, so why not start using smart socks instead of a dumb sock? And so uh, that's what you did. And this is our, this is our first prototype here. Um, we just put some money together, and we just said, can we do this? And you can just see it's just an on-off switch. So when you hit the ground, it's talking to the phone, and we said, we can do this. And so then we went and raised some money, and, and off we went. So uh, what I like about this is that this sock is alive. When you see these sensors, Everything you do on this foot, on you, when you walk around on the sock, it can do readings. So we're starting with fall prevention, on off, patients up out of bed, but there's so much more which I'm gonna get into, which I'm gonna share with you some of the stuff that we're working on that I haven't shared with anybody in a general audience yet. So you're gonna get some new stuff. But this is a quick video on how it works. Alarm is using innovative technology to create wearable textiles for patient safety, patient mobility, and to improve patient outcomes. Polarum pup socks allow us to monitor the patients when they get up out of bed and they're non-compliant, and there's a safety event going on, it will notify the three closest nurses to that event to respond in real time to prevent a patient fall. We really believe that we can make an impact in reducing patient falls at U.S. hospitals. There's over one million patient falls in U.S. hospitals every year. In our clinical trials to date, we have reduced patient falls by up to 50%. We're chasing outcomes. We're chasing patient safety. We want to improve patients' life and keep that precious cargo safe when they're in the hospital. 
Okay, so as we mentioned in the video, one million falls a year in U.S. hospitals. 30% will have an injury, and 10% will have a serious injury. And the reason that's so such a problem in hospitals and healthcare is because in healthcare they came out with a rule that uh, with Obama, you know, several years ago, called hospital-acquired conditions. So hospitals are no longer reimbursed for hospital-acquired conditions. So if you do a wrong site surgery, you pick up C. diff or an infection while you're there, or say you're there for chest pain and you have a fall and fracture your hip, well, that should never have happened. So they're not paying for it. So there's a financial penalty, there's a quality penalty, and, and God forbid it's your loved one and family member that you think is gonna go home, but they're gonna go to the nursing home now for two weeks or two months because they fractured their hip. Big deal, and a big cost. Uh, it's about over $14,000 on average for a fall-related injury in a hospital. Um, you've got, uh, so what we've done is our clinical results here show we've been on patients now for over 49,000 patient days nationwide. We're in five different states, and we, when we started our company, we thought we were going to try to reduce falls by 5% or 10%, 15%, would be really, really good. We are reducing falls by over 50 to 60% in these U.S. hospitals that we're in. So we're really proud of, our, proud of that. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, but again, it's, it's dealing with change. It's, everybody's used to bed alarms, bed alarms, bed alarms. But uh, we did some peer review articles. We did it at our trial at Ohio State. We turned off the bed alarms, had our socks on the patients that were fall risk patients. And all of this works magically through remote monitoring. The patient has the socks on. We pair a tablet in the room. The nurses wear a badge. That patient gets up out of bed unattended it will call and find the three closest nurses to the room. Not call to the nurse's station, call, it will find in real time the three closest caregivers to that room and buzz them to say, hey, you got a safety event going on. So um, peer review publications were nice. We won the shark tank contest in, in, for the VA. And here's the best part, our pricing. Uh, most places and hospitals have video sitters, patient sitters, and those are really, really expensive. Um, you can see our cost goes from, you know, if you have a video sitter or patient sitter is anywhere from three to $900 a day, we're $11 a day, because it's remote patient monitoring. I can monitor 35 patients on a nursing unit, okay, with the same staffing. Uh, it's just amazing what we're trying to do here with uh, remote monitoring to keep that precious cargo safe. But so that's, that's what we started. I, we went on this journey about eight years ago. But when you deal with um, innovation and technology like this, you have learnings. I feel like I've got a PhD in wearable textiles. So what I'm going to share with you is where we're going with this. So that was just step one was fall prevention. We're turning it on, letting the nurses know. But now we're going to go move our attention to mobility. Everybody here, is everybody here getting older every day? Right? Okay. What happens as you age? Your mobility. How, did, how, how does your mobility, how does that, does your mobility get better as you age or less? Less. And it's profound. The research out there shows us at the average age of a lady and an average age of a man when you start to go down with your mobility. Uh, it, Dr. Oz has a thing where he can tell you your physiolo physiological age. So, like, I might be chronologically, I'm 55 years old, but physically, you know, my, my blood pressure, my, my uh, heart rate, my whatever, my cholesterol levels, I might be 49, right? So, Dr. Oz will, will promote your, what your uh, physical, uh, uh, physiological age is versus chronological age. And I said, I wonder, I wonder what we could do with that with mobility. So d does anybody here uh, know how to get their mobility assessed? Anybody? So if you wanted to, Commissioner, just because you're right up front, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to measure your mobility functional status, how would you do that? Yeah, yeah. But my point is, it is, mobility is going to impact every single person in this room. Every single person, every human being in the world is going to get impacted with mobility. 
You don't see it, you don't know it, because there's no way to measure it. So what I say is, yeah, if you want to get your mobility measured, I've got to go to this fancy machine, I've got to have all this stuff done, and they do have some motion labs that you can go to, and they're going to figure out what your mobility is, right? Very difficult. We don't talk about it, we don't think about it, because it's not accessible to all the, everybody. Well, what if I had a blood pressure cuff, right? Before I had the blood pressure cuff, it was hard to take a blood pressure. But now I can take your blood pressure anywhere. You can go to Walmart. You can go some, sit down in the, and get your blood pressure taken. You can get it taken at home. You can get it taken anywhere in the world with a blood pressure cuff. So I'm saying, hmm, I want a blood pressure cuff for mobility. I want to have my socks be able to go to physicians' offices, people's homes, home health, rehab, hospitals. I don't care where you are. I can have a briefcase, the insurance man who's going to write your policy to see how much to charge you for your life insurance policy. If I know your mobility data, that's a valuable data point. I can tell you how long you're going to live by measuring your mobility. Let me say that again. If I know your age and I know how you're walking, you, there is, a, there is a, a direct correlation to your ability to be mobile and being sedentary and life expectancy. It is a key, key, key factor in everything you're going to do. This is what we're going to be doing. You can see here. That sock and those sensors is a force plate. On the beetle that connects, we have an accelerometer and gyroscope on the beetle that connects. So when you're walking, you can see, think of an EKG monitor, when they do an EKG monitor on your heart, right? OK? That's what we're doing with these socks. Because when you stand, you stand on a, like a three-legged stool, your first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, and your heel. So when you stand on these socks, not only can we tell you when you walk, are you 60% on your right side, 40% on your left side, I can tell you how you're dis displaying your weight on your right foot, on your first metatarsal, fifth metatarsal, your heel. So I can, I can understand what your balance is, what your sway is, what your, how, what your distance is between your stride length. Are you doing heel-toe strikes? Because you're supposed to be doing heel-toe strikes. So I, I say we're going to have the EKG for mobility. I'm going to be able to look at that rhythm so you see those waves up there. There's a pattern for your mobility. I think in the future we're going to be able to say, oh, that foot pattern is dementia. That foot pattern, this EKG, is uh, Alzheimer's. There, your, your brain impacts all that. So it's going to impact your mobility. So we are going places with mobility. This is what I think the future holds for us with mobility. So how many here would like to know their mobility age? <laughs> okay. So, all right, where's Addie? Uh, 
Okay, next year, this conference, I'll try to get a booth set up and we'll, uh, but I, I, I tell people I, all the time, I'm like, you know, those uh, mobile vans that pull up do screenings and stuff at places and stuff. I said, if I pull a van up and tell people, hey, come in here, you want to see what your mobility age is, uh, it's amazing. We don't talk about it because it's just not readily available data to actually put into use. Not only are we going to be able to tell you what your mobility age is, we're going to be able to tell you here are the three things that you need to do to fix your mobility. Because if you're walking around like an 80-year-old and you're 65, that might, from a wellness standpoint, it might just motivate you to go walk the dog every day. All I can tell you is as your mobility decre decreases, your life it impacts directly to your life expectancy. Don't be sedentary. Get out and move. We want to help you move. We want to help you get to know what your mobility age is. Um, so that's our goal, is to come up with what is, uh, your, what's going on with mobility, how do we help you improve it. Uh, we think that that's going to be a big thing uh, if we, uh, as we start to go through clinical trials and stuff. But um, these are just some of the other things we capture. Like I talked about, we can have a, your risk of falling, so we'll be able to give you a score, a mobility fall risk index uh, for those uh, loved ones and stuff that you're concerned about. Um, so the other thing we're working on is with let me go backwards now to the hospital. So if you're wearing these socks in the hospital, what we want to measure is how many steps are you taking? So one thing we don't do in hospitals is we don't document how many steps you take. How many times are you out of bed? How often are you out of bed? We don't do that. We should because we don't want you laying in bed all day. So we're going to be able to, be able to automatically with these socks on, d throw it into the EMR, the electronic medical record, and tell people when the doctors and nurses come in to take care of you, how, how many times, how many steps have you taken since you've been, since you've been here? You know, also, chair mode, when they get into the chair, how long they've been in the chair. But just, these are things that we're not doing in hospitals. We're not measuring number of steps, number of hours in the chair. Yes, we do it when physical therapy comes by and documents what they did for 10 minutes, but the other 23 hours, we don't document it. So these are the kind of things that we are, I, or believe that we can make a difference and that are innovative that let technology help us with all that versus putting it on nurses, depending on nurses to document. So uh, this is one little thing uh, I think is really cute here that we've turned on. So this sock can improve safety in a hospital just by having the sock on. See what happens here when these guys get up. Watch what happens behind them. Imagine 2 o'clock in the morning and your mom or dad or loved one, grandpa, grandma, gets up in the middle of the night. They're in a hospital, unfamiliar environment, they're in pain, if they just get out of bed, the light turns on in their room. How cool would that be? These are the kind of things that we can do um, to help improve safety. So we're really excited about what we think we can do for hospitals. So if you're part of a hospital system, healthcare, I'd love to talk to you. We want to help you develop a, a smart room for those patients. Um, and then the last thing I want to share with you is um, something that has nothing to do with healthcare or hospitals. And this is, again, this is the benefits of innovating. When I started this journey seven, eight years ago, the path I'm going to go down here with you is something I never even thought of. Um, and this is the fruit. So we created a badge for our socks because we wanted to find the three closest people, okay? So nobody, no hospital in the country does that, that I know of. There's a safety event going on in this room in real time, and it finds the three closest people to that room and says, bing, 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 you guys are the closest in real time. Pretty cool technology. What we did, you can see there's a little button on this badge. And on the button, I said, well, if I can find the three closest people, I want to give that to the nurses. So maybe a nurse needs something. So we put the little button on there so the nurses could say, hey, if somebody's choking or aspirating or something, I can call for help. And it'll find the three closest people and say, Patrick needs help. And I thought, OK, that's pretty nice, right? Well, uh, you can see here, um, we, and th what's nice about this badge is it's a, I can tie into the, your active directory and it has my picture. So uh, let me, I don't know if I can back up. Uh, can you back up the slides real quick? Uh, one more. 
There you go. Willie, can you hit play at the bottom of that screen, that ID? Is it hit? Go up. No, go. All right. I thought, sorry. Um, well, so there's a, the, the, t the display we use is an e-ink display. It can tie into your Active Directory. It can be your photo ID, okay? So what I said was, I go, hmm, with all these school shootings that are going on, it really bothered me. There was one in Texas a couple years ago. And I said to myself, I said, I think our badge can help these schools. And everybody was like, what do you, what do you, we work in hospitals, Patrick. We don't, we don't do anything in schools. I know nothing about schools. I, work, I know hospitals. Um, I said, but our badge, we can push that button, and it will find the three closest people. And I said, well, then what if we double clicked it, and what if we triple clicked or did? You know, so we came up with this one, two, three. But what we did is we found a school named St. Susanna up in uh, Mason. All full disclosure, my son is a seventh grader at St. Susanna. But, um, so I knew the principal. I asked him if, we, if he'd be willing to trial our badges for school safety. And he said yes. And so it took us two years. This was two years ago. Remember Texas was a couple years ago. Um, we were down when all that happened. I went to my board of directors and investors and I said, hey, I want to donate these badges. I want to donate the technology and the know-how to put these badges in the schools. And they were like, okay, all right, it's a goodwill project. Sure, go ahead, Patrick. So it was just a passion, you know, project of love. We get in there, it took us a while, but what we did is we worked with the SWAT team, we worked with the local police department, and so what we did is we had to do a lot of development and coding on our end, but we made it work, and so what we have at the schools is they have these badges, they come to work, they have the badges, we set up a command center, so the principal knows exactly where everybody is at any time, right? Just, there's a big, ball, a big uh, electronic board, but, when they push the button, so if a teacher, let's say there's a fight, or a student's choking, or something's happening, and I just am a teacher, and I'm uncomfortable, and I need assistance. They just push the button one time, and guess what it does? Finds the three closest teachers. They don't have to call somebody. They don't have to wait for a response. I push this button, and the three closest teachers can come. What's going on, Patrick? You need some help? Yeah, hey, I'm in the military, remember? I like three people coming. Can you go run and do this? Can you go make a phone call? I need an extra set of hands. You've got three people all right there that you can go do this for, right? And I got hands on. And I'm not waiting. I'm not calling the office. So think of those big schools and campuses. And we want to keep teachers safe too, right? I mean, the teacher's safe. Push the button. Then the best part, we worked with the SWAT team and the police department. We said, okay, if there's, let's say there's a suspicious character somebody we don't like on campus. We can double click the badge, double click it, and within a second or two, it will notify 100 teachers. In one second, 100 teachers are notified. Go to lockdown procedures, suspicious character located in the gymnasium. So the badge, this screen will change screens, light up and beep, okay? So the screen changes and talks to you. So to tell you what's going on, this is saying assistant requested. But then the next one is suspicious character. So it's a suspicious character, fourth floor gymnasium, wherever. But the beauty is all 100 people, teachers around the campus, have been notified in one second to go down to lockdown procedures and they know where the threat is. It's not some light blinking, okay? It's not something on your phone, right? And God forbid, if you don't have your phone with you, everybody has their badge, boom. So that's suspicious character. So then administration can go check it out, see what's going on. But in the meantime, everybody's in lockdown procedure. The third option was, okay, I see something I don't like that I think is an active threat. They hold it, hold it down for three seconds. It will not only go to lockdown procedures for all 100 teachers, but it will also call 911 automatically. And what the police love about it is that it will tell the police exactly where the threat is. So think of, think of a, that situation. How many phone calls do you think go into 911? And they're trying to triage where it's at. But what we're doing is we are commissioning 100 teachers to be safety ambassadors for the school. If a teacher, you know, a, this, the resource officer is great, but he's one person and he's here 
and there's all this other campus to watch. So all these teachers can now be empowered to click the buttons for suspicious character. Okay, I'd rather be suspicious and be safe if it's nothing, just a guy with a backpack that we didn't like, right? Or the third option is to call the police, uh, lock everybody down, tell them where to go. But one of the best parts I like too is that at the command center, uh, once, let's say, let's say the police arrive and we're getting the situation under hand, the west side, we know that the threat is on the west side. and We have secured the east side. I can send a message to all the badges and say, anybody on the east side is clear to leave out of this door. You know, get people out of that building, right? So I can communicate during the, the situation with the teachers what's going on. So I, I wanted to share that with you that, um, it, again, it came from just starting these socks and then thinking about playing with the technology to develop the mobility, which then led to the school safety badges. But it just it starts with just an idea about what's possible. So with that, I think we're done. I was going to hit end. I'll give you my information if you need it. Um, thank you.